The objective of this video is to facilitate the safe filling of tissue expanders by patients' local physicians. The contents of this video will cover the equipment required, marking technique, injection and filling technique, and the endpoints of filling. Ideally, this video will allow patients who have received tissue expanders to have you, their local physician, to fill their tissue expander safely, avoiding puncture of the tissue expander and stop filling at the appropriate endpoint. Essentially, a tissue expander is a saline-filled implant with a built-in portacath. The silicone injection site self-seals Deep to this is a reservoir and a metallic end plate which prevents the injection needle from going through the back of the tissue expander. If the tissue expander is injected in this self-sealing area outside of the fill port, it will seal but does have the potential of the needle going through the back of the tissue expander. The area outside of the fill port, if it is injected here, will result in the tissue expander leaking which will require a replacement of the tissue expander. The tissue expander is placed deep to the pectoralis major muscle, which depending on the thickness of the mastectomy flaps and the pectoralis muscle can be some distance from the skin. This is the first stage of a breast reconstruction, uh, which will be followed by removal of the tissue expander and placement of an implant. Tissue expansion would typically start two to three weeks after surgery, with the longer time frame occurring in this setting of a tight skin envelope or radiotherapy. After that, expansion would occur every one to three weeks, depending on patient tolerance, and occur for usually around three months, followed by a three to six month waiting period where the, after which the tissue expander is removed and exchanged for an implant. If there's any sign of the incision opening or wound edge necrosis, please contact the patient's plastic surgeon immediately. The equipment required for this procedure is as follows. The magnifinder. Sterile IV saline bag, 100 milliliters or more, 160 cc lure lock syringe, 121 gauge or smaller needle, 118 gauge needle, an alcohol swab or chlorhexidine skin swab, one adhesive bandage or other dressing, a marking pen, a small gauze. To avoid a shift in position of the tissue expander between marking and injection, both the marking and injection should be done in the supine position. This patient has had previous uh, filling of her tissue expanders, and now we're coming to add further volume to the left side, which is uh, radiated and so is tighter, um, and needs to essentially catch up to the other side. Uh, often the uh, fill port can be felt, uh, and this corresponds to the uh, firm area on the uh, tissue expander. The uh, magnifinder has a toggle with a small magnet on it that uh, finds the metal back plate. And then when we're marking, we do this in 90 degrees to localize it in the center of the uh, fill port. The magnetic toggle should be tested to see that it moves freely. Uh, the uh, location of the injection site can be seen by moving the magnifinder in two 90 degree planes and then marking this uh, with a uh, marking pen. Generally topical or local anesthetic is not required but may be used. Although typically not required, patients may take acetaminophen or ibuprofen prior to tissue expansion. Rarely in a very large patient, if you cannot comfortably locate the fill port, this can be done with the assistance of a radiologist under ultrasound guidance. Once the 60cc syringe is filled with IV saline, the 18 gauge needle is exchanged for a 21 gauge needle or smaller as the fill port will not seal after a larger bore needle. Twenty-one gauge needle going in 90 degrees to the fill port. Uh, 
would be some resistance going through the skin and muscle, and then firmer resistance going through the fill port, loss of resistance, and then firm resistance as the metallic end plate is felt. This confirms the correct location of the needle. With some tissue expanders, the fill port may become tilted. Ideally, the needle should enter the fill port at near 90 degrees to avoid the risk of going out the side of the fill port. Preferably, the needle would not be pushed firmly against the endpoint to avoid creating a burr on the needle which could damage the fill port. If a seroma is present, it can be aspirated after injection while the needle is being withdrawn. The amount of filling would typically be in the 50 to 70 cc range, but could be as low as 30 cc's if the skin is tight and it's uncomfortable, or over 100 cc's if things are going more easily. And basically we'll keep filling until the patient either says it's becoming uncomfortable or the skin begins to blanch. Excessive erythema edema, pain or tenderness would be a reason to stop further filling. That's starting to get a little bit firmer. I think 55 would be fine. So then take the syringe out. Sometimes there'll be a little bit of blood and then usually we'll dress this with a small uh, dressing to avoid any uh, staining on the clothes. After each filling, the volume is recorded, not only to determine what the final fill volume is, but also as a guide to subsequent fillings for that patient to see how well that volume was tolerated. If more than 60 cc's is required, there are several options. One is to re-inject after refilling the syringe. The other is to leave the needle in place and essentially cap it with a 1 cc syringe or to use a butterfly needle with the uh, cap to seal it off while the 60 cc syringe is refilled. Or another option completely is to start off right at the beginning with a fill tube with a uh, cap or a uh, one-way valve. The tissue expander should be filled to one of three endpoints. Either the patient feels the volume achieved is adequate, the skin can no longer tolerate expansion or the maximum volume of the tissue expander has been reached. Should the maximum volume of the tissue expander be reached prior to the other endpoints, please contact the patient's plastic surgeon to determine the next step. If the skin is thinning or persistently tight or blanching without progression of the expansion, this may indicate that no further expansion is possible without tissue damage. The key points are marking the patient carefully, injection with a 21 gauge or smaller needle with IV saline, and recording the volumes. We hope this video has been helpful in facilitating tissue expander filling and appreciate you taking the time to embark on this. Please don't hesitate to contact your patient's plastic surgeon for any further guidance and thank you for taking this on.